Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you my three methods for creating tables to track transactions in Microsoft Access. And just to be clear, I'm talking about like bank transactions here, not SQL transactions. That's a totally different video. Today's question comes from Ian in Columbus, Ohio, one of my Platinum members. Ian says, I'm designing a database to track my bank transactions. Should I use separate fields for deposits and withdrawals or one field with positive and negative values? Ian, I get asked this question all the time, and I've pretty much got three different methods that I'll use depending on the type of database I'm building and who I'm teaching. I've got different methods for beginner, intermediate, and advanced level students. And it's funny because Ian sent me this question about a week or two ago, and this just came up in the MS Access subreddit. And lots of people posted some pretty good ideas and some information in here. Of course, I chimed in. I'll put a link to this down below in the description so you can go and read all this if you want to. Basically, I've got three different choices that I recommend depending on who you are and who you're building the database for. First, you got the single field. You put your transactions all in one field. Call it amount or whatever you want to call it, right? Credits will be positive values. Debits will be negative values. This is the easiest to build for a beginner developer, someone who's just learning Microsoft Access. But it's harder to use because as a user now, you've got to remember to put your checks in as negative numbers and your deposits in as positive numbers, and that can actually get more confusing for the user. So what I'll do in that case usually is throw a little conditional formatting on that field to make it red or green, depending. That's not too hard to teach beginners. Then you've got the two-field situation where you've got a deposits and a withdrawals field. It's a little harder to build because you need some query logic in there to do the math right. But it's much, much easier to use. I recommend this for most of my intermediate level students. It's not that hard to build. It's much, much easier to use from a user standpoint. And this is actually the method that I recommend and use in my check register database and my template. If you want to watch this video, this is a free video on my website. I'll put a link down below. You can go check this one out as well. And then the third method is actually the most advanced, but gives you the most flexibility. All values are positive. You enter them into one field. You're back to a single field again. But you have a transaction type identifier that could tell you what kind of transaction that is. It's the hardest to build from a developer standpoint, but I think it's the easiest to use from a user standpoint because you got one field, you pick the type of transaction, and the database then knows whether it should be positive or negative based on the transaction type. And it allows additional flexibility because you can have multiple transaction types. You can separate your withdrawals and deposits from transfers, right? Transfer in, transfer out is different. You can do bank fees as a separate type of transaction. So it gives you a lot more flexibility if you're building a more full-fledged accounting system. Let me show you some examples. All right, here I got three examples to show you, and of course the check register template, which I built in the other video, which I'll give you a quick look at that in a minute. But let's take a look at database one. Real simple to build. Got a transaction table, right? I got a, I scaled this way down. Transaction ID, see here, transaction ID. You got your date, right? Don't make a field called just date. That's a reserved word. Right, your description and the amount. And notice that positive values are credits and then negative values have to be your debits, right? And then your transaction form is nice and easy. I put a little bit of conditional formatting in here to help the user, but you gotta remember to type them in in that method. All right, database two. Here we've got our transaction table, same basic thing, but instead of one field, we got two, one for debit, one for credit, okay? And when the user goes to enter these things in, they can very clearly see this whole column's red, put your debits here, put your credits there, and then the computer can figure out which is which. This is a relatively straightforward and easy calculation to do with a query, All right? Design view, here's my total field. It's a simple mathematical equation, right? I'm gonna zoom in for you so you can see it, All right? The total is the credit plus multiply the debit by negative one to make it negative. Okay, very easy, very simple, easy to build, easy to use. This is why I prefer this method for most users. Easy to build, doesn't require a lot of knowledge from a developer standpoint, and users can pretty much 
figure out how to use that. This is how I built my check register database. Pretty straightforward, right? Easy to develop, easy to modify from a developer standpoint, and relatively easy for users to work with. Now my advanced method, database three, requires a transaction type table. So you got deposits, withdrawals, transfers in, transfers out, and then you specify whether that's a debit or not. Okay, then your transaction type table, you do this, you put a transaction type ID so that the database knows which type of transaction each one of those is. And then the transaction form looks like this. You come in here and you put in, you know, I just bought some triple bait. And that's a withdrawal. And it was $13. This one's a little more difficult to develop from a developer standpoint. You have to know relationships between your tables, a little more complicated of a query function. So I usually save this one for advanced users. And even so, for most people, like if you're doing personal finance, you're doing a, you know, a basic check register, you don't really need different accounts here. You know, a debit and a credit is usually enough for most small business or home finance. But if you start getting into more advanced accounting systems, you might need to be able to specify the type of transaction it is here. And again, I've scaled these way down for the examples for the video here. Usually you'll have like a check number field and a vendor ID and all kinds of other stuff on these check registers and transaction tables, but I scaled this down for the video. But that's pretty much my three choices. Are there other methods? Absolutely. It completely depends on your business, what works best for you, what your needs are, what your end users look like. You know, if you're dealing with people who are pretty computer savvy, go with something that's a little more advanced for them. And in fact, someone in the uh, subreddit even asked if they should use multiple tables. Personally, I don't think you should use multiple tables for the same types of transactions. I think all transactions should be in one table, but if you've got a compelling business need to use two tables, that's great. I find it, it's, it's easier to have everything on one table than it is to try to put together data from two tables with a union query later. Again, that's my opinion. And feel free to, you know, feel free to post your comments below. Let me know what you think. What kind of accounting system do you use? Do you use multiple tables? Let me know. So that's pretty much it for this tech help. Members, I haven't forgotten about you. In the extended cut for the members, I'm gonna walk you through that advanced table method. I'll show you how the transaction types work, what the equations are in the query. And we'll go over some of that stuff. And of course, gold members, you could download all three of these databases and check them out for yourself. But that's it for today's tech help. I hope you learned something. See you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to, I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product 
in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.